The use of Mobile Elevating Work Platforms, or MEWPs, is very common. MEWPs such as boom lifts, scissor lifts, and stock pickers provide easier and safer access to workplaces, especially when working at heights. As with any piece of equipment, there are risks involved when using MEWPs. Proper training concerning their use, operation, inspection, testing, and maintenance is vital to the safety of all workers. This training program was created to assist in understanding who is required to be trained, the type of training required, the content requirements of the training, and who is responsible for performing the training. This training program will highlight different aspects of the training requirements for MEWPs, including terminology and classifications, definitions, equipment changes, safe use while training, requirements for training, responsibility for training and familiarization, retraining, training content, training environment, testing, and retention of records. MEWPs are classified into groups and subdivided into three different types. Group classification is determined by whether the lift stays within the tipping lines or moves beyond the tipping lines. Group A is an MEWP that moves vertically but stays within the chassis or tipping lines. Scissor lifts are an example of this group. Group B MEWPs can move beyond the machine's chassis or tipping lines, which includes outside the wheels or outriggers. Group B generally refers to boom lifts. The type of lift is determined by whether the lift can travel when stowed or elevated and the location of the controls, which allow such travel. Type 1 MEWPs can only travel with the platform in a stowed position. Type 2 MEWPs can travel elevated and is controlled from the chassis. Type 3 MEWPs can travel elevated and is controlled from the platform. Type 2 and Type 3 MEWPs can be combined. The following terms are used throughout this training. Knowing their definitions will help you in understanding the information given in this program. Familiarization. Operators becoming familiar or acquainted with a specific MEWP for the purpose of and before operating the MEWP. User. A person that has care, custody, and control of the MEWP. A user is responsible for ensuring the operator is familiar with the location of the manufacturer's operation manuals, the purpose and function of all controls, features, and devices, and limitations and operating characteristics. Occupant – anyone that is on the work platform. Operator – persons that are qualified to operate an MEWP. Owner the entity who has possession of the MEWP by virtue of purchase, rental, or other legal possession. Qualified person. A person who, by possession of a recognized degree, certificate of professional standing, or by extensive knowledge, training, and experience, has successfully demonstrated their ability to solve or resolve problems related to the subject matter, the work, or the project. Supervisor, a person assigned by the user to monitor operator performance and supervise their work. Additional safety design features are now required on all new MEWPs. New safety features include load and tilt sensing, 
a stability test for pneumatic tires, wind force requirements for outdoor use, tow boards on all platform areas, non-flexible entrance gates, taller platform railings that meet OSHA and ANSI requirements, and sustained involuntary operation controls. All operators must be familiarized with the MEWPs being used and trained on the new safety features prior to operating. Existing equipment is not required to be retrofitted to meet the new design requirements. Therefore, it is important for all employees to know the difference between the company's various MEWPs and are properly trained on both types as needed. The safe use of an MEWP while training is vital. A worksite risk assessment, correct MEWP selection, familiarization with the MEWP, inspections and work performance monitoring must be addressed when training. MEWP operators and their supervisors must complete training, which includes the inspection, maintenance, use, application, and operation of MEWPs. Only employees who have been properly trained and who have received MEWP-specific familiarization can operate the MEWP. Operators are required to provide the occupants of the MEWPs with instructions and a basic level of knowledge to work safely on the MEWP. Training is required for each of the classifications of MEWPs. The responsibility for training is required by different entities from the manufacturer down to the operator. Each entity plays a vital role in the safety of all personnel involved in the use of MEWPs. An entity's responsibility may change depending on its role. Manufacturers must provide training materials and operating manuals to assist others with their duties for training and familiarization. If requested, Manufacturers must offer familiarization upon delivery to an owner or user and employer. Owners must train and familiarize or have proof of training and familiarization for all employees authorized to operate an MEWP. User employer must train and familiarize or make sure any employee they authorize as operators, supervisors, and occupants have been trained and familiarized on the specific MEWP. Operator must provide occupants of the MEWP with instructions and a basic level of knowledge to work safely on the MEWP. At least one occupant must be taught how to operate the MEWP controls in case of an emergency where the operator becomes incapacitated. This does not give the occupant the authority to operate the MEWP except in an emergency. A qualified person must monitor, supervise, and evaluate operators on a regular basis to ensure their ability and competence to operate the MEWP. Retraining would be required in at least the following situations, such as the expiration of the operator's valid training period or an inadequate performance. Additionally, an operator that has not operated an MEWP for an extended period or one that has had an accident or near miss must be retrained. The introduction of new or significantly different technology also requires retraining. MEWP specific training must be provided to operators and their supervisors. All training must be provided by a qualified person who is experienced with the specific classification of the MEWP and is knowledgeable regarding laws, regulations, safe use, manufacturer's requirements, 
and recognition of and avoidance of hazards. Training must consist of both theory, classroom type training, and practical hands-on operation and evaluation. It must be presented in both a language and vocabulary the trainee can understand. Theory training must cover the rules and procedures for safe use of the MEWP, as well as the following. The selection of the right MEWP for the work. Operator manuals, placards, and decals, and safety rules. Location and storage of the operator's manual on the MEWP when not in use. Valid annual inspection is documented on the MEWP placard and the inspection is current. How to perform the pre-start inspection. Responsibilities associated with problems or malfunctions affecting the operation of the MEWP. Stability factors. Hazards associated with operation. Workplace inspections. Wind hazards and weather conditions. Complete understanding of the MEWP controls their intended purpose and function, including platform, ground, and emergency descent controls, general knowledge of various MEWPs, any and all applicable regulations, standards, and safety rules, the use of appropriate PPE, safe traveling procedures, transport issues, knowledge on how operators obtain authorization from the user employer to operate the MEWP. Securing MEWPs to keep unauthorized operation from occurring. Requirements for familiarization in addition to training. Understanding of hazardous locations. Warnings and instructions. Requirements of operators. Dangers of high pressure systems as found on an MEWP responsibility of an operator to provide basic level knowledge to work safely on the MEWP and other subjects required by the MEWP manufacturer. Trainees must operate the MEWP long enough under the direct supervision and evaluation of a qualified trainer to demonstrate proficiency in the following areas. Familiarization with the MEWP. Identification and function of major components. Performance of pre-start inspections, daily inspections, and daily checks. Setting the MEWP when required. Operation and function of all the controls. And parking and securing the MEWP. MEWP operators must provide instructions and or make sure all occupants have a basic level of knowledge to work safely on an MEWP. At least one occupant must be taught how to operate the MEWP controls in case of an emergency where the operator becomes incapacitated. This does not give the occupant the authority to operate the MEWP except in an emergency. Occupants, at a minimum, must know the following regarding the MEWP. Requirements for fall protection and location of fall protection anchors. Stability factors. Safe use of accessories they may need to use. Site-specific work procedures. Hazards related to the task and ways to mitigate them intended purpose and function of controls and safety related items. This includes emergency shutdown and lowering procedures and manufacturers warnings and instructions. Personnel that directly supervise MEWP operators must be trained in the following areas. Proper selection of the MEWP for the work to be done rules, regulations, and standards that apply to MEWPs, provisions for safe use, training, and familiarization for the work to be done, potential hazards of specific MEWPs, 
and means of protection, and importance of operating manuals and the requirements for them to be stored on the MEWP in a weatherproof compartment. The practical or hands-on training area should be designated as such. The area should be marked off with warning flags, roped off areas, barricades, or flashing lights. The area should be kept clear of other moving equipment and personnel traffic. A risk assessment should be performed for each test location to identify, eliminate, or mitigate hazards and risks. Employees must demonstrate competency via testing before operating the MEWP or supervising MEWP operators. Results of both theory and practical training must be documented. Documentation of training must include the following. The name of the entity providing training. The name of the qualified trainer. Identification of the MEWP covered in training. The date of training. Name of trainee. And the time period the training is valid. The following records must be dated and retained for at least the time period the training is valid, and the familiarization records must be retained for at least four years. Name of persons trained or retrained and MEWP classifications. The name of entity providing training. The name of qualified trainer. The names of persons receiving and providing familiarization and the MEWP make and model, the frequent and annual inspections and dates, any service or repairs, and training and familiarization. Mobile elevating work platforms are useful pieces of equipment in the construction and warehouse industry. Proper training concerning their use, operation, inspection, Testing and maintenance is vital to the safety of all workers. Only employees who have been properly trained and who have received MEWP specific familiarization can operate the MEWP. And finally, always work safely while operating or working on an MEWP because safety is always a part of your job.